Welcome to Waycrest Matter 13. Well, I'll try to give you tips and tricks on what I'm doing when I'm tanking. The first pull in this dungeon is rather simple. We pull all the mobs together so everybody can AOE them down. For me as a brewmaster, I have to pay close attention to my brews and my defensive cooldowns. Nothing special about these mobs except for the shadow cleave done by the bewitched. You'll see it because I've marked all of the frontals with a raid marker. It's an easy mechanic to avoid, just sidestep away from it. Now we get to the room where the first bosses are. I typically never cleared the side trash before, but running with pugs, somebody always pulls them, so I've gotten a habit of clearing both sides. Here, I made one mistake. Probably several mistakes, but one mistake in particular. If you notice that I got a lot of activity on the left hand side of the uh, room, that's because somebody pulled the boss. Here, as I Spam my camera around, I can see that the boss was pulled and already attacking the group. Unfortunately, because I'm a, I'm a brewmaster, getting aggro, it's tough if it hasn't been established by me yet. Because my aggro is based on damage. So I pick up the first boss and try to rep reposition him back into the uh, group. Anticipating the switch, I start building aggro on the remaining mobs. When the purple circles appear, Do not overlap anybody else's purple circle. Switch. Again, my goal as a brewmaster, keep my brews up so that way I have a defensive cooldown always ready. Once I get all the mobs grouped up, it's easy. DPS them down, enter up when you can, proceed to the next boss. Switch. Next few mobs, again, you've got the frontals with the shadow cleave. Again, I mark them with a raid marker to allow people uh, visual to see these are these mobs are important.
We proceed to the courtyard. Here, I'm just trying to gather everybody up so we can AOE him down. Alright, this next pull, I'm going to pull two groups here. As you can see from the marked targets, I have three mobs that I need to manage, mostly just to interrupts. Also to note that if you can get the mobs to stand in fire, they take additional damage. So we are the second boss. Not too much to do as a tank other than keep your defensive up when the uh, boss reaches a certain amount of stacks where you see DPS slowing down on it. Run the boss into a fire. His stacks of defenses go away. DPS can do more damage. However, there's fire adds that spawn and go in one direction. So if DPS is not mindful, uh, they can get hit with some pretty hefty damage. For DPS, it's probably important that you stay close to the boss in case you get entangled. That way, you can be AoE down with the boss. Right now, I'm just trying to find a good fire packs to run the boss over. Now here's a tank I tell DPS stack on the side. That way I can run in, grab the mobs in the hallway and in the room, and then bring them out here in the courtyard where we have more room to maneuver. You want DPS to be on the side because some of these mobs are casters. And that way they don't sit in the hallway casting. Or leaping on a random player with the tank not having aggro. Again, I'm just following normal mechanics. I've got one important mob to manage, marked as star. For the rest, I'm just moving out of AOE, stunning, and interrupting where possible. Dinner bell is the uh, cast that you got to run out of. I need a target. So here it looks like we have four mobs that I need to manage. Burst them down, 
I had some of them standing in fire, so they took extra damage. There I got scared. I didn't want to get hit too hard and die and not uh not be able to get back to the group. So I wasn't in range for my AoE ability to uh, grab the other pack. But since I got a majority of the room, I removed my marker so I can have the group follow me in. Bell was cast, so we gotta get out of the AoE. Again, much harder to maneuver in this hallway than I would liked. But I didn't want to keep people waiting outside longer than they had to uh, because I didn't do the I didn't do a big enough pull. Pop my defensives. No real mobs to manage. Now for this boss, you kind of want to stand on the same side as everyone else so that way the AOE that he does uh, in terms of leaving the pool of slime on the ground can be in somewhat order so people have a place to stand his tenderize ability which is what he's doing right now is random wherever there's a body he has a percentage of targeting that individual and then casting tenderize in that direction but in terms of the ad spawning this is where you want to stack before the before that happens so that way those puddles are in one particular area instead of being scattered around the boss whatever you do switch dps to the ads once the uh, servants start coming towards them if any of the servants get to him, uh, increases his damage. You can stun the adds. You can CC the adds. And I'm kind of running out of places to stand, so just kind of take the damage, try to mitigate it as much as I can, get out of his tenderized uh, AoE. And you can see the closer you are to the boss, the easier it is to move around his abilities.
Watch your step. So here I just tried to pull the one mob because we were already over count and I didn't want to pull the side room by the stairs. I had a rogue in a group and I could have used stealth. But as you can see, the uh, side room got pulled anyway. Again, both of these mobs are uh, important because they do either a frontal or they have a cast that roots uh, the, the uh, DPS or the people that they target. Here, you just pull everything. Uh, there's no way around it. The soul essences are the ones that you're gonna kind of manage, as, as well as the uh, coven. Um, the soul, what they call the uh, soul charmers, they uh, create a debuff on the ground in terms of a ritual. You have to interrupt their cast and move them out of the ritual. So, Soul Volley. And then Wandering Candle. So as you see, I'm, I'm waiting for someone to interrupt. So that way it can get moved out of that debuff. My interrupt comes up, so I interrupt. This boss just targets a random individual or they're going to drop puddles. Maybe get target with a green circle move to the side of the room second mechanic is what he calls dancing put the swirls on the floor don't stand in the swirls Lady Raycrest, she spawns. Taunt. Ayo hey, down. last boss pretty easy uh, he'll summon an undead ad you pick him up as a tank if you're DPS you DPS the ad down there'll be little vials of formula that get spawned on the ground you pick up those vials of formula and you throw it on the ground before you killed the ad that prevents the ad from respawning if you fail to do that when he calls the new ad, he also resurrects the other ads that you have killed. So if you kill ads in random spots and not next to the boss, you'll never have enough vials to prevent them from respawning and you'll get overran by ads. Yeah. 
And that's Waycrest Manor.